Welcome, I'm Taylor Sharp. This is the Dallas chapter of the FileMaker Pro and User Groups. We're glad to have everybody here in the meeting group, as well as those of you virtually. For today, we're going to have Raf Batista come and speak to us. Raf is the president of Ronel Data from down in Houston, Texas. He actually runs the Houston user group down there. They need a little bit of encouragement down there. So if you know anybody in the Houston area, tell them they need to get with Raf and, and encourage them to help get get a little more activity in the, the Houston area because obviously Houston is a big place. They got to be a bunch of FileMaker developers there hidden away somewhere, I'm sure. Raf is making things happy, so he's helping with a resurgence down there. So go Raf, go. So Raf's been a long time uh, FileMaker developer. He's a, one of the partners and all those good things. A lot of you know about Square for Small Business for credit card processing. He's going to tell us how FileMaker can make API connections with that, and we look forward to that presentation here shortly. Next month, Jeremy Brown is going to come in. I think he's coming all the way from Florida or something. He's going to do JavaScript. So if you haven't dove into JavaScript and FileMaker, it's a good opportunity to uh, learn a little bit about that. And then the second Friday of January, not the first one, we're going to move it due to being too close to the New Year's, we're going to have the accounting presentation that, I don't know, Steve, are you doing that? Or, okay, Steve, Steve's heading that up. Go, Steve, go. We, everybody's had to do some accounting module stuff. I'm sure he can help us figure out how to do it better and more efficiently. So I look forward to that presentation. Uh, yes, we're going to talk about Square and FileMaker. Quite honestly, it was not something that came to mind. It was just prompted by a client, which I think is what prompts most of us to do something. I'm Raf Batista. I got the introduction of who I am down here in Houston. We, in, in this neighborhood, in the place that I live, we actually have the honor of having the two tallest buildings between Houston and Dallas. That's one of the coolest things we got here. And not much of a nightlife, though. Still, from here, I've been doing FileMaker for quite a while, since the early 90s, and so I know all the perils of pre-6 and all the way up to now. And this was interesting to tackle, and there's still a whole lot more work to do with Square and FileMaker, but this will get people's feet wet, understand how to get in there. And it was actually a little bit, it was kind of scary on how quickly you can get to the information. But it was nice to know how secure it was to get to that token. If any of you have heard of Square, some of this m might be familiar, some of it might not. Yes, it is known for credit card processing. However, there's a lot more to Square. It can actually handle orders and invoicing with recurring invoicing. You can do split up an invoice with multiple payments. So you have multiple payment options. But it can be more than just payment processing. It also offers online stores. So down the road, I'm expecting that I'll be integrating with a lot of that. But right now, it's just integrating with what, again, was prompted. I'd like to show you how to get in there and, and create a developer account. It's free. To sign up with Square is also free. There is, of course, checking your identity, and like any credit card processor would truly do. And after that, you're free to do. I actually use Square for credit card processing myself and adding the developer account was very easy, very quick, and it was rather painless. So what is Square? Square is basically, like you all know, it's for online payment processing service. Some features it's got, you can create, send and track invoices. You can process online payments, but it also has POS systems. You probably have gone somewhere and they use Square. You may not have noticed it, but it's, that was his first dive into the retail market. And then after that, it has expanded to even include online stores. So it's a really neat. And on top of that, each of these different things, like the different POS systems, or if you're doing it on your phone, each of these can be different locations. Cool part is you're not paying more for multiple locations. So it's, it's a nice price tag on Square and can set it up. Though I, the percentage they take may be a little bit higher than some, it's kind of worth it. So. You know, just spoke about that price of Square, that percentage they take from you. So what are some of the benefits? What really do you get out of it? Yeah, you get a bunch of business services in one place. You get POS systems. You can go on your mobile device and uh, capture 
payments through there. You can go online store, capture payments through there. And all of this integrates together and you can actually do some levels of reporting and be able to track in a pretty nice looking dashboard. And it does handle customers, orders, invoices, payments, and tracks all of those separately. And come to find out that the order is what holds all the items and the invoice is just an invoice on that order. We'll talk a little bit about that and uh, be able to track on how the payments come in and how all those connect with the IDs. So it does have some reporting. It's not as customizable as FileMaker, but then again, what really out there is as customizable as FileMaker. And another reason to integrate, or get some of those reasons. It does actually include checking and savings accounts and actually offers business loans. Those last two bullet points are not very well known for Square, but they actually come with some pretty nice perks. So now why integrate? Knowing what the benefits that you get with Square and the features it has, integration is sort of almost an intuitive why you would want it. One of the biggest ones that's just easier to bring data into FileMaker. Uh, have a client who has been running FileMaker and runs his entire company with FileMaker, and he's offering invoicing, this automated invoicing, like once a week, something like that. And on those invoices, he offers, hey, you can come and make payments with Square. It's an alternative to exporting from Square. I've had to do this before. We export from Square into Excel or CSV, but have to import into FileMaker or whatever else you want to go into. That's the only other integration option Square actually provides. So let's just gonna go over the steps on how to integrate. It's gonna be really, these first few steps are semi-obvious and I'd like to show you where that developer uh, console is and show you what these steps are to sign up. So you basically start at the Square developer site, which is simple, developer.squareup.com in US English. And you can go in there and then create a developer account. And once you create your developer account, you create an app and the app, you name it, to, of course, what you need to have so you can reference it later. And in that app, you can get an API token. So you kind of have to dive in there pretty deeply to get to that API token. And once you have that API token, you can do uh, quite a many different things. But some other questions that have come up every time I talk about APIs, people ask, can you replace the IP API token? Do you have to delete it and come back? Yes, you can always just replace it. And yes, you can always go back and, and retrieve that API anytime you need it. So it's not one of those API tokens you're gonna to need to go and refresh automatically or have to go back. Oh, I only saw it once, I forgot it. It's nice to be able to get that token if we need to. And some really cool pricing here, developer account is free. Signing up with Square is free. There is the identity you've gotta go through. And then you can also hook up your bank accounts. You can hook up a debit card if you need to do that for more instant transfers. A lot of things you can do and get access to your money. Their app is actually pretty cool. Let's go over some of the steps. We're going to start with the, the demo. And the demo we're going to start with deals with this. Well, the developer account. And it's a little sign in. Okay. And don't worry. Everybody knows that. Spread my email. Spread it like wildfire. Okay. That was destructive. Okay. Now, when you come in here, as I was saying, you'll see you have application. So add one, which I did add one, load up and you click to open it, which you, you can add the, the, you can push the plus button to add a new one. Then after you enter your information, which is simply a name of the, of the app, then you can get to your token, which you can then show it anytime you need to double click at the copy and all this jazz. Okay, you can click here to replace that token. All right, this is also tells the information about the version. It has other things you can do here, but it is that simple to set up an API access token. So it's not anything too deep. You got to go here, got to go there, nothing too perfect to worry about. Um, this here, this is the template that, that I've uh, begun. You can see the access token be put right over here. And it was over here and that it's for reference. That's more visual. I actually now store the API token in a calculation. So we say custom function. And here is the square access token. Inside here, it is hard coded, but it's inside the custom functions. 
So if I ever have to go into, I can always hard code it back in here. This obviously can be stored anywhere else. Okay. It's really quite simple. I wanted to show you how this get locations works. It's really a um, very, very simple script. As we come here, we have simply, uh, there's no data. We can just simply access the list of locations. And you have the simple curl options, which you're pretty used to. These curl options up here that you're used to. And it's a get. That's the thing about when you get list here, you get the get. Not a, it's not a post. And you give it the version. This is the access token. And over here, you have the content type. Pretty standard. No frills, nothing big. And once you do that, you do your insert from URL, and then we go and loop through each one. Let's extract back them. So when you click it, it actually operates pretty quickly. I only have one location because I do remote work, and so I'd get uh, paid by remotely only one place. I don't have multiple retail shops, but if you did, you'd see them all appear. Okay, and you saw how quickly that was. I've actually tested this out with about 50 payments using test payments, and it was very fast. I'm only doing two just to quickly show you how it works. And these payments here operate the same way. You can get a list of payments with no data. They so come here, get the list of payments for a given location too. And so what I had here, when you have a location, you give it a location. I use JSON to pass in parameters. Here's their host. This is separated, so we can switch. Uh, if I need to, I can switch between the sandbox or the actual production. I do not dare put my production in there because that would be the actual information on my actual account, and I do not want to mess with that for obvious reasons. But the base URL is always that host, which is going to be whether there's the sandbox or production. But also down here, tell where you're going to, the endpoint's going to be. If you're going to deal with the orders API, the customer's API, the payments API, whichever one you need to go with. And that's uh, straightforward. The data in the situation is simply to send when location is given to send the location ID. It is that simple. The location ID is stored in FileMaker, and I will show you where that's stored. It is stored under the hood in the locations. There's no way to take a look at it here, but I will show you under the hood where it goes. You will see the square location ID. This is the square location ID. So anytime that we created a location, Square gives that location an ID internally. And I just simply bring that back into FileMaker, okay? And this, the script, again, is just very, very simple to see that in the list of locations where I come and loop through it. We can see the ID put over here. I just pull it out of the location data. It's just simply called ID. So that's where it's, it, Square does not really do anything too complex in their JSON responses. And so you can parse it really nicely. So I like the speed of it. That was the biggest thing I liked about it. And you can do the same thing with customers. Okay. This customer, well, when you click this button here. I'm sure you'll see it for now. It's hard to see. You can create the customer with um, JSON with a simple post command. But the information that I want to show you here is that there is this customer ID that comes from Square. So every time you create something, you are going to get an ID and bring it back and parse it out. And then to show you this script in detail, we be creating an order. When you create an order, which we have invoices, just an invoice and line items here, I'll show it to you here. We have invoices and your items down here. 
This is the JSON under the hood of how this one line gets represented. Every time you are going to do uh, something in Square, you have to put what kind of money it is, put an amount, and this amount, this does not represent $200. This amount actually represents $2, which is a bit of a error. But the point is that this is supposed to be the full, including the fence, but there's no period, it's just straight up cents. And then you have the currency, in this case, US dollar typically. And of course, the name of the quantity, and that's for each item. You bring that together and it creates a, it creates the line items and it creates an order. Once you have the order, then we can build the invoicing. I did have it creating the order and I want to show you how this works. So first, all, all the, the top parts from here up is sort of the overhead grabbing parameters. And we have the base URL again, we're coming out of orders and we can get the access token. And then here's the data. This data, we have the order, which we're going to be sending it. We can send an invoice just straight up. It always has to have some sort of order connected with it, or else it gives you an error. And I just give a name, whatever reference you want to put in there is up to you. The location ID is required. Every invoice has to be connected to, or every order has to be connected to a location. It also has to be connected to a customer through that ID I showed you earlier. Those are the main requirements. Other than that, um, these are put in here because this allows you to do invoicing that to turn off the automatic application of the discounts and the tax. We don't need to have that. It creates issues when you try to create the invoice down the road. So you have to do that first to put on the orders. The line items here is putting a list of that JSON that you saw for each item, listing them and putting them together into a JSON array and then putting the value of the order object to be a JSON object that has all that information. Okay. It is that simple to go and take a, to, to put it together. There is a lot more information and a lot more data you can do with it, but that's honestly, that's like the most basic you can get. And this was operating and I did chase down two syntax errors, but want to show you one thing. You'll note that again, this is post. Anytime you're going to create something, it's going to be post. If you want to get information, it's going to be a get. They also did upgrade the version on me, which caused me a bit of havoc, but that's okay. They changed a couple of things, made things a bit better, which is always a good thing. And again, the speed is, is much improved. And the rest of it is just typical setup for an API. The setup of the Square API is quite honestly the, um, the best thing about it. It's actually very straightforward, very simple. Once you have the token, you can hold on to that token and do whatever you need to do with it. I'd like to show you a bit of what happens with this script. I'd like to show you the data. This is the data JSON. It is again, straightforward, it's really easy. The, the big thing is every time you mention dollar amounts, money amounts in Square, since it is international, has to account for everything you can possibly do. It does uh, separate out the amount and the currency. So keep that in mind when you're dealing with this. And if you're going to take an order and make it into an invoice, make sure you have these pricing options. I am still in the process of debugging the one piece that actually showed up today that was taken care of last week. But the point is there is a bit of an issue where this gets, was not processed exactly. However, the structure is right on target. And I'd like to show you how this structure works, even with the API Explorer that allows you to do this online so you can test your, your calls. So we do this, we insert from the URL. We do get a response. And I'm getting this, which occurred this morning. So instead of doing that, 
I want to show you how it's supposed to be working like it was working two days ago. I wanted to show you this, the, the way this is, this is their API Explorer. And when we run this, it runs nicely. I like the speed of it too. You have again, your base price money. We have the quantity and all this. This is your line items. It is simply a JSON array. Okay. And and you have a reference. This reference is not required, but it's good if you want to send an invoice number that maybe FileMaker is going to use. So this is location ID. That would be the location that it's going to be associated with. Every Square account has a location. So always look for that, find it, and use that ID. Then you have these pricing options that have to be there when you go and make a, an invoice down the road. And when you do that, the response looks just like this. You have the ID of the order that it creates. You have the location ID spitting back what you told it. And then it has the full details of the items on that order. Each item has an own ID, quantity, the name, the money, but also tracks the gross sales amount, the total tax, all these other bits of money, which you can use and get really detailed or ignore it. Most of the time people are ignoring it. And you get all the other information when it was created. Um, what is its current status? That's what the state is. It's not a state as in a United States. It is a state as in status. Um, and the other information that you can extract um, as needed with the JSON. So I really uh, was hoping to show you creating the order and seeing this result in FileMaker like I was seeing it, but at least I can show you the result here. Okay. So the API is not difficult. And the only thing that I had did find during that, uh, during my efforts is that there could be some little nuances in some of this uh, syntax and what is expected to be an array, what's expected to be an object, um, other things that are, that can kind of get in the way is when things are like this, you need to put it false. The other thing to keep in mind, any dollar amounts are with the cents. So this does not represent $10,000, it represents $100, okay? So those are the biggest things to keep in mind uh, uh, when you're doing the square. But other than that, it's just very straightforward, very basic, okay? And so at this point, and when I went to just, just we'll describe this to my Houston group, we ended up having lots of discussion on use cases and where this can be used. For example, one thing that did come up is where do you want to put the line between having your orders and invoicing in FileMaker? And when does that go to Square? I think anybody who uses or has worked with apps of this nature or services, you have to determine where that's going to be cut off. Okay. Um, I'm looking at, again, a work in progress of generating a, a payment link, which when you do this, let me go and show you the, not the way, the not mean to the button, but if you were to run the create a payment link with the current order, And then you will notice, I want to show you the result. What ended up happening, this was a okay. This one was neat to show Houston at MDOT. But the point is, it would create a payment link that you could get take the URL out. And I want to show you how one of those works. And this is how the Square, when you have a payment link that they would click, this is what your your recipient would receive and be able to see on their browser. And this was just one that had an expensive item. It had a total of not much money. You could add a coupon, do some payments. And all of this was basically created from the create payment link. And I will say the goal is proof that this didn't work <laughs> because this is where I generated the file maker. So there is some issue going on that I 
can't get to the bottom of, but it is pretty because the outputs are here. And here's the evidence, Your Honor, that this actually did generate. But the point is, it's simple to set up. And that's what I wanted to show is the simplicity of the data and the API set. So if we create the payment link here. And data is actually very simple. It's just I had a JSON where you the invoices. And so I put that in. Yeah. You can see it has JSON here. And it's quite simple. Again, you have this invoice uh, description and you have a customer ID, which I, I've left blank. And you can leave on a payment link the customer ID blank. It'll just put it to a new temporary customer that it will associate that payment with. You've got, again, another dollar amount. So it's separated out. Here's your amount. Here's the currency. Here, here's the description for that item. Here's the quantity. You can also put a location which I left out, it doesn't have to be there. And then your reference for any kind of reference to your invoice. It's not difficult to do that. You split it to that payment link and it will come back with the actual link you need. The link you need will be the one that I'd shown you. It will be, it'll be inside the JSON that you have to then extract. It'll be a link similar to this up here. Okay. And the link lasts a good while. So it doesn't expire, but you can delete the link whenever you need to, which is neat. You can do that through the API really easily using literally is called delete payment link. With that said, that is just what I want to just sort of scratching the surface of what everything you can do with Square and the API as easy it is to set up. There seems to be some issues with, um, I don't know if it's encoding or what have you. Just by he thinks it was something that I could show you what the results are. And now here I am. Well, when it comes to Zulu time, it's being stingy with me. At this point, I can open things up to questions you might have, any ideas that you see that this could be used for, any questions on what the use cases would be, any questions about Square. I'd like to open that up to everybody right now. First of all, thanks. Really great. Also, thanks for the quick pivot and making this happen in spite of airport fun. I just wanted to make sure I understand the context of what Square is and how it might be useful. So just between what you said and what I was able to see online, it seems like Square is trying to expand their relevance as an organization into being that transactional business flow partner capturing and moving money in as many ways as possible and of course taking their pound of flesh for the you know for the benefit of having done that so i see that you can set up invoices and in, in kind of a clearinghouse style similar to what we see with quickbooks and and other things where we can offload right. the act of sending that invoice collecting the money and yeah i guess delivering that money to to you the vendor kind of all in one, right? And then you get the benefit of Square's a known brand. I can pay with credit card. I can pay with ACH. I have all these different, you know, pay, in, including yes. you can turn on what I think they call it after pay, but basically yes. let me pay over time kind of thing, right? Yes. Um, and they also, they also allow cash app now too. And, and yes. cash. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure I was kind of understanding like, why do I care? <laughs> so I think the I think the idea from my perspective, I care if I'm running a business or trying to, you know, I'm trying to do something where I want to present an easy way to have an outside entity collect my money for me, probably using a brand that people have heard of and hopefully trust and facilitate that. And you've kind of showed us, hey, the API is not that hard to set that up and integrate with it and leverage that power. So two questions that I'd like you to talk to just real briefly along those lines. One, yes. what was the use case of the person who asked you to look into this? You know, and you don't need to be super specific, but just kind of generally right, right. like what was their business use case? 
And the second one is kind of the, the flip side. Why shouldn't I use Square, right? What, so based on what right. you've seen, what other things, you know, when would you say, you know, but it's probably not a good deal here. So, yeah, if you could just speak to those two things, the use okay. case and why shouldn't I use Square? Got it. The use case for my client, they're in the industry of construction materials testing, but they were needing to provide their customers another way to pay them. And they already had a system that engulfed almost every piece of their business process. And it was a neat system that has remote text that on the field can enter data on their iPhones, goes back to the home office, gets, gets processed over there. It was a transition from manual systems to mobile. So I think the story was heard before, but in collecting the money, they want to go one step further than their competition. In their industry, there's a lot of payments by check, but they recognize they can get people to pay by a credit card. And they said, okay, we're going to go and do that. And they were doing it manually. They would, obviously, they would go ahead and yes, people can pay online. Yes, people can get a link. They can go get an invoice in their email. They can click it, pay it online. That part's great. But getting that invoice together was not so easy. They already had an automated way to create invoices in FileMaker. But how do we get that to the client? How do we get their payment? And that's that bridge that brought it together. He decided, I'm going to use Square, but still, how am I going to go and make that invoice in Square? How will I get the data I have in FileMaker to Square accurately so I can get my payments? That's where the bridge came in, and that's what prompted this. Uh, and to address your second question as to what, you know, why not use Square? You've seen a lot of the benefits and they're constantly adding. When I began with Square, what, probably a what, decade ago, they did not have anywhere near this. They were not this feature rich before. And early on, it took a while for adoption because they had a couple of issues that made, made members, which is myself, kind of question you know, is it worth it? But they say, no, they told us, stick with us. It's okay. We've got some, some future plans. They did deliver. So it stuck with them. Um, and they delivered pretty well, kept their rate the same. And we liked what was coming up and they kept, they kept dishing it out correctly, giving us what we needed, what they said they were going to give us. And before we knew it, we were able to do recurring payments. We were able to do split payments and things of that nature and said, okay, this will work. And at the same time, they upgraded their POS systems. They upgraded their credit card systems. They had issues in the beginning with taking contactless payments, but that was corrected. And that really solidified things when all of a sudden the POS systems worked really well. Then all of a sudden they really became very relevant, which is how my client ended up going with that. Being concrete materials testing, you don't think construction is going to use Square, but it is so easy to set up that, hey, let's do it. And then when we had to answer the question of how do we make this work, Square had already had a robust API. Let's go, and let's use, use that. So that's how it got to the point that it got to now. Hey, Rock, this is Taylor. Yes, sir. I got a question here. A uh, couple of other things. Uh, you know, one of the questions that Steve was asking, you know, there's, you know, why use it, but why not? i uh, like to throw out, are, are there been, for example, vulnerable, you know, are there issues with PII uh, information? Are there uh, uh, liabilities to you uh, processing uh, things? Are there, um, uh, are there, for example, some merchant processors, if you're the middleman, you get a kickback. Other one, a lot of them, I don't know that these do. In fact, I didn't even, did you cover how much the pricing even is on this? Uh, you, you might want to cover that issue. Mm -hmm. And those are a couple of questions you can respond to. Thanks. Yes. Oh, you are. Thank you. Well, thank you for those questions, Taylor. And to address first the, to kind of address them in reverse order, they do charge a pretty hefty 3.5% fee. Uh, I think it's also the 20 cents per transaction. That goes down. If, if you, if the person is either typing it in themselves or if they are there in, you know, physical presence, if they're, they're right there at the POS system or where you're swiping it, it's less than that. So that would be the pricing. So they do get, you know, a good chunk of it compared to some of the others. But, you know, the other 
I, the other thing is to, to note about Square as far as the special, special data that, that you want to keep protected, right? They don't have, they, of course, they, because they, they began with credit card processing, they do really protect the credit card and the payment method data, okay? But any other data beyond your name, email address, your physical address that you're capturing from customers, they really don't kind of hold that back too much. And there's not much more protection outside of the payment method and the amounts that you're paying. Be aware not to send very sensitive data back and forth. Square does have the ability to add custom field, but if you look at their documentation closely, they also warn you don't make fields for social security numbers or anything else that you really don't want to be exposed because it will be exposed. So be aware of that. They are there to keep the payment, the transaction secure. They do not guarantee it beyond that. If that makes sense. I think that's a great clarification. Did, did, does anyone remote have a question or want to chime in? It's, I know it's sometimes it's hard to jump in. I do, Steve. In part, I may be speaking to something that Steve raised and Taylor as well. I represent a company that I've been using for 20 years for credit cards. We also do electronic checks now. So maybe this is a question for you, Raf. If you, if you saw a solution that allowed you to do programming in FileMaker just as easily as what you demonstrated, and the fees that the client was paying were less than what Square charges, and you were earning a commission every month for being the agent who set up the account, would yeah. that be persuasive to you as a better solution? That I would be getting a commission as a middleman for the the other company as compared to Square. Would I? Yeah, because would Steve consider... sort of hinted at that when when he said that I don't remember exactly Steve's words, right. but when you are giving Square this business, you're not getting rewarded for that. No, in Square, when you're in the in that position, in the way that I'm doing it, no, they they do have a referral program that changes periodically. You cannot necessarily predict it, but and they don't really have a partnership type program. I'm not really a middleman. You can't really necessarily be a middleman. Too, you're not going to get too. You know, you're not going to get the cut in that respect with Square. I also should mention for everybody's yes. benefit that. It's really, really important to not store credit card numbers in FileMaker uh, unless you are absolutely certain that you'll never have um, any kind of an intrusion because the penalty is $50,000 per incident of a violation. So it's important that if credit cards are entered, uh, they're stored somewhere in a secure method. Good. And to further that, Dennis, I will say the standard practice with, at least in FileMaker with the, with the payments, is to not store the credit card information at all in FileMaker and to let a, a service such as Square handle that. They take on that liability and Square never exposes the credit card. No further than the last four. Agreed. Yeah, definitely make sure, I, I make sure to never store social security numbers for its birthdays every now and then, but definitely not credit card numbers in FileMaker. I've had clients ask, I said, nope, nope. That's why we have placed things like Square and QuickBooks and all that jazz that take care of it for us. Jillian, I wanna let you jump in. We see your hand raised. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> so I just wanted to add a couple of things. I have clients that use Square, not necessarily integrated with FileMaker, but just as a um, transaction platform. I think Square and Stripe and PayPal and all of these other online processors are really good when you have a low volume of sales because they get a little persnickety when you need to make higher volume or large transactions. So for example, I had a client where we had an online form where people could prepay for their funerals. Well, funerals are expensive. So if, if someone is putting in a credit card transaction for eight or nine or $10,000, you 
guess what? After the first two times you do that with Square, they go, hey, we need more information about you. We want to make sure you're not laundering money. And then they want to connect to your bank account and regularly check to verify that you're a legitimate business. And my client was like, forget about it. We're just not going to take online payments. I'm not doing that. So that is one caveat. So there's the convenience of being able to have access to these APIs and 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 do smaller volume transactions. And it does tend to be less expensive because most other credit card processing providers like Dennis was referring to often have a monthly fee. They used to call them like statement fees that you're paying on top of whatever your transaction fees are. And again, if you're low volume, it doesn't work to your advantage to be paying 20 or $30 a month for a statement fee on top of the two and a half or three percent that you would be paying in the transaction, or the transaction fee might be lower. But again, it all has to do with your volume of sales and what makes sense for your business. Competitively, you know, PayPal, Stripe, and Square pretty much have the same base rate transaction rates. But again, most suitable for lower volume transactions. But I do want to say uh, I was very surprised at your presentation. I don't have a lot of experience with APIs. And I thought that how easy that Square made it for you to be able to connect was just really brilliant. I've been using a technique where I use a third party service called Make, which is very similar to Claris Connect to basically handle all that authentication stuff. So you basically send your data, whether it's JSON or whatever, you send that to Make and Make does all that connection stuff. You just wire together what it is, what kind of transaction it is that you're doing. So if you're sending an invoice, you then just map your fields to where they need to go when Square and they then <clears throat> you get the response at the end, just like you're doing with insert for an URL, and then you can parse or do whatever with the response that you get. I I take the perspective of the the less programming I need to do in FileMaker because somebody else knows how to do it better than me. That's that's the route that I've been taking. But again, I'm very new at at the whole ABI thing. But it was very impressive to see that it that. Your solution was it was very, very simple. It seemed to me, you know, at looking at it, was very simple to get set up. So thanks. Oh, you're welcome. And yes, it is simple to set up. And uh, Gerard, I do see your hand raised. I don't mean to uh, be taking your job here, Fred. Uh, <laughs> but I am interested in, uh, I'm going to get to your question, Gerard. But I want to say one thing that to, to you, Jillian, with uh, you know, the API and what you were saying, that yes, it is very simple to set up. And there's... There are some things with, with Square. And one of the things that my goal is, once I'm done with Square SRAM, once I get these API calls settled, that I'd like to actually put into Claris Connect and maybe build a custom connector there. That'd probably re be down the road. All right, so Gerard? Uh -huh. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, so we had a client not too long ago that they wanted to start taking payments or they, they called us because they says, oh, we can't use our payment processing anymore because our merchant account had been compromised or we'd been blackballed or something to that sort. So they tried many times to get that squared away, but they never did. Eventually they did research and we gave them some options and they came back and started using Square as the option for doing their processing uh, processing because they didn't have to have a merchant account. Therefore, you don't have to have the statement fees each month with stuff like that. So there are incidences where if you don't have to have that merchant ID, it's kind of a good thing. Yes, you pay you pay for not having it, but you can if you if you've been had a problem with your merchant ID in the past, you can start doing payment processing again. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Good point, George Rock. And uh, you know, under the hood, you really do have a way to you know. There's obviously an identification you, that Square does give you and things like that. And if you do have any problems previously, Square will help you get there. And it's not difficult to build yourself up with Square. That's a great shout out. Thank you, Gerard. Good good ideas on when maybe we should and shouldn't. I did want to call out, Scott had posted in the chat a question previously about whether or not Square provides, I believe that the term he used was credit card vaults, right? In, in a sense, yeah. can we, for that credit card information, can we store it and reuse it 
And and I think that gets to the recurring payments model. Scott, feel free to chime in if I'm misrepresenting the question. And then Raf, if you could respond to that. And I think this will be our kind of our last our last at bat okay. here. Okay, Scott, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna start answering the question. Let me see if you have anything else you wanna add. I see you added something in chat. I'm gonna take a look at that, make sure I'm adding it. Yes, exactly. The Square does allow you to store not just one, multiple cards on file. And it's to the point that it's so secure, not even anyone at Square will know what was stored. It just there with under the customer's file and the customer can get multiple ways to pay when you give them an invoice. They can use one of those cards they have on file. They can ask you to use one of those cards. They can add cards. They can delete cards. You can remove cards. Square will notify you when a card is expired, okay? So it does store securely. And again, once it's in there, it's encrypted, it's secure. You're not gonna, no one gets access to it. I don't know of any breaches of that data I've ever heard from Square. Please correct me, anyone who's had experience with them, if I'm wrong on that respect, I know that I have never had any issues as far as that information is with Square. So they do have it and you can use it with recurring invoicing. You can do it with payment invoicing. And again, the customer does have access whenever they get an invoice to allow them to store that card on file or remove cards on file, things of that nature. So I hope that answered the question there for you, Scott. All right, we want to thank everybody for joining us for the November 1st FileMaker Pro Users Group and uh, join us again in December. It's going to be exciting. Thank you all so very much. Thank you.